music is where you found your calling, obviously. Yes. Uh, DFA Records, founded in 2001, celebrating its bar mitzvah this year. DFA Records, 13, 13 years. What would the DFA Records bar mitzvah look like? Who um, DJs? Well, it's probably going to end up looking like my bar mitzvah. So yeah. maybe I think I'm the token Jew in the, um, in the office. Um, what was your bar mitzvah thing? I think it might have been Billy Joel. Billy Joel. Is that a theme? <laughs> it could be a theme. I don't know. Was it each was table a different song? No, but we actually had centerpieces made of 45 records of, um, of um, You May Be Right by Billy Joel. You may be right. On 45. I think Just they supplemented them with some Springsteen 45s because they couldn't get, a, my mother couldn't get enough <laughs> Billy Joel 45s to local records. That's store. how Bruce Springsteen, he got gold records because people bought him for bar mitzvahs. For centerpieces. centerpieces. And there's a vat of chocolate mousse. Oh yeah. I'll be mad, I don't There's no ice sculptures, nothing like uh, that. My theme was SNL, Saturday Night Live was my theme. Oh, you were saying SNL. SNL. That was my first choice. We kept choice. it clean, SNL. SNL. <laughs> SNL. It's not always clean. No, no. Sometimes I, people swear on that show. Yeah, I think yeah. I was on the Goat Boy table. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jim Brewer. That's a classic. That's a classic. Classic. classic thing. So, <laughs> look, for DFA Records, for those who don't know, it's one of my favorite labels. Some of my favorite musicians are on it. There was a great documentary that came out celebrating 12 years of DFA, uh, narrated by Mark Marin, shot and directed by our mutual friend Max Joseph. Max. And uh, let's take a look at this short clip here describing what John does at DFA. James Murphy we saw there talking about peanut butter. <laughs> <sighs> this guy is something else. Now, I want to hear, we got to wrap this up, but I want to hear your favorite James Murphy story that's never been told. That's going to be catnip for the music bloggers once this gets posted online. We need views here, Jonathan. James Murphy, LCD not, sound system. We did not go over this. We didn't go over this. But this guy, he would sit next to you at your office there for many years when you started he out. And then I, I, there's some, some melancholy when you talk about it in the documentary, how he's sort of uh, yes. been a little absent lately. Yeah, well, it was er, the early years. You know, we were all just in... Hot, we have a st recording studio in the same building. Right. And so there's a, we were always in the building, either making music downstairs or in the office upstairs. And um, LCD really didn't start until 2005. So there was, like, the first four years um, of the label, uh, we were together every day. Yeah. And then... As the band grew, you know, it was like a two-month tour, right. four-month, you know, just like kind of kept um, uh, accumulating, and until you realize, like, you look over and the desk is just like it's kind of uh, like your high school bedroom when you go return from college, where like nothing's been touched. Right. There's little embarrassing posters on the wall, and that was kind of James's desk, which we actually just cleaned. Really. The other like two weeks ago. I was wow. Like, I can't take it. Did you find some, find some gift cards to Nobody Beats the Wiz? And like. There were, like, complaint letters from hotels. Like, I just found, like, the weird, like, stuff from tour that he just, like, stashed away. Yeah. Just, like, weird stuff that was, like, shoved under his door from, like, you know, the ho someone at the hotel. Like, just weird stuff. But I can't really. There's the infamous, um, he, t he talks about this in interviews, how he um, feels like he missed his chance to write for the Seinfeld show because there was, which is... You know, there's um, there's a couple of different versions of the story, but I did actually find the original letter, um, which I, I did scan into my computer sneakily yeah. to, for safe for, uh, for posterity, posterity, or and, eBay, uh, and or <laughs> or eBay. That the original will fetch a lot. Yeah. And it was um, a letter from George Shapiro, uh, wow. sending James. You know, here's like a couple copies of like spec scripts. We you know we look forward to your submission. And, um, and that was the letter where he just like never, he was like, ah, eat, fuck it. Oh. He's like, oh, I should do that. Oh, pizza, you know. Like, yeah, <laughs> peanut butter. Yeah, peanut butter. <laughs> peanut butter. Well, that's great. I hope you share some more stories of people who approach you after the show, because you're going to be sticking around, spinning back there. I will. Some, some LCD sound system, some of them. I brought all DFA. All DFA records. Oh, I can't wait. Jonathan Galkin, everybody. Thank you. That was a treat. Yeah.